This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by NIL Game Changers, Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, and Brewers Outlet. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Everybody, welcome back to the Steve Jones Show here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Brought to you by Brewers Outlet for all your beverage needs. Brewers Outlet in Sunbury. Uh, heard from Matt Contrillo. I heard him talk a little bit about the gymnastics. Uh, kind of tend to agree with him. I think we talked about that a little bit. Uh, some other notes from around the area till we uh, till Steve gets back here. Uh, Braden Fosnott of uh, Danville High, uh, 2017 Danville High graduate, pitched at uh, West Chester as well. Uh, he was moved up from Jersey Shore to uh, Reading after the, uh, I believe, on Sunday. Uh, Reading opens up a a series all week at home with New Hampshire, so hopefully Braden gets a chance to pitch for the uh, Fight and Fills this week. Uh, pitched real well, had 18 starts at uh, for the Threshers. Uh, I think the kind of the issue for uh, Braden is uh, he's a little older, so he's about 25 going to Double A. I think the Phillies yeah. they're getting to the point now uh, where they're going to try and see what they have with him. No, and I don't blame him. I mean, look, that, I'd rather see that than and I'll give you an example. I gave you the example yesterday about Saturday, and yeah, and Jody Mack knows what I'm going to talk about here. The Red Sox won the with a bullpen day. Wonderful, that's adorable. The next day, James Paxson got hurt on the third batter of the game. Well, they had nobody left in the bullpen. Okay, great. Love the plan. All right, this half hour, this half hour being brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf online, sunburymotors.com, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, best in new inventory, great pre-owned inventory with the Sunbury Motors guarantee, and a terrific service department that backs it up every step of the way at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. And always great to bring in the incredible, incomparable Jody Mack. Jody McDonald, welcome. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you these days? I'm doing well, getting myself immersed in some Penn State football stuff so I can call the first game. Uh, nice. So, yeah, it is nice. Um, let's start with the Eagles. Uh, you know, one preseason game. That's fine to me. It's all about roster spots, forty to fifty-three. That's what I think preseason games are. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, any general thoughts on the opener? Yeah, it was a good peak. That's what it is. And when I say peak, that's P E E K. Uh, not uh, E-A-K, because if it was yeah. a peak, they would have been phenomenal. <laughs> um, yeah, with the defense playing a handful of snaps for the starters and the offense playing one offensive starter, how much did we really learn? We learned some debate as to who's going to make the team, who's going to be the 40 to 53rd guy. Um, but I, I, I'd say no one should be perturbed by the Eagles' first effort. Jake Elliott should be happy he got a second chance to make good and take a game-winning field goal, but nobody should be uh, all that excited either because their subs are slightly better than the Ravens' subs. What does that really tell us about the upcoming 2024 season? 
Yeah, I think that sums it up pretty well. Uh, I'll say they got an interesting guy in the draft that is not a superstar, but I always thought he was a rock-solid college running back in Will Shipley. Uh, now, is he going to start? No. But what was just your general impression of seeing him for the first time? Got the touchdown uh, on a nice play, nice pass, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm not the biggest Kenny Pickett fan, and he didn't wow me the other day, but that was a uh, nice play. you got to give uh, credit where credit is due. Yeah. I am on record as predicting, before the game the other night uh, during the offseason, after A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, that Will Shipley will be the Eagles' fourth-leading wide receiver because everyone wants to talk who's going to be wide out three. Is mm-hmm. Paris Campbell up to it? Jimmy Wilson has looked very good as a six-round draft pick in camp. Um, who can emerge? Will Howie Roseman go out and get another wide receiver before the season starts? I think Shipley can carry that load. And you may see, because the offensive coordinator is going to be a little bit more diverse this year, going to try some different things, you may see two back sets where both Barkley and Shipley are in the backfield together, and then Shipley goes in motion into a slot spot. And, yeah, I think he can get separation, and I think he can make plays, and it's good to see that he and Jalen are already uh, kind of on the same page at practice and pick it because he caught the touchdown pass the other night. Uh, yeah, I'm a Shipley guy. I thought it was yeah. a very good draft pick, a value draft pick, and if they just let production be their guide, I think he'll be the number two back behind Saquon Barkley this year ahead of Kenny Gaywell. I'm completely agreeing with you because, again, he is he is a productive guy who plays hard. I mean, Shipley plays the game hard, and he just seems to have a knack and a feel as to how to play the game, even though he not may not be the greatest athlete on the field. And one of the pluses for me, and I may be just whistling Dixie here, is when you got a rookie guy, and if he's got talent, the other team doesn't know him. Right. Everyone knows what Paris Campbell's going to bring to the table. So I think he can be covered. If you've got a rookie that the other teams have only a college scouting report on how he's going to be played, uh, how he's going to be used, what kind of routes they're going to run him on coming out of the backfield, I think that can be a plus, and Shipley could be a nice uh, ancillary contributor for the Eagles this year. Uh, When you're looking at this team as a fourth and fifth wideout that eventually could be used because somebody gets banged up, is there anybody standing out to you? Yeah, if uh, it's not going to be Shipley in these open formats, uh, Johnny Wilson has opened people's eyes. Uh, big kid, and you don't usually think of six four guys. Some teams use six four guys in the slot. Um, they may, because both A.J. Brown and more so Devontae Smith, have the flexibility of going in and playing in the slot. Uh, yeah, you can see him stepping up and being the guy who gets the most snaps at the wide receiver when they're in three wide receiver sets, and I think the offensive quarter will enjoy making it difficult on defenses by using different guys at different positions outside and in the slot. Uh, They all have the flexibility and the talent to do it, so that could be a plus uh, if Wilson continues to show that he's ready to play in the league. Is there somebody on defense that we should take a closer look at that might be a contributor to help out the guys they already have? Um, good question. Um, here is the key guy for me coming into the season because I think we've got a good guy. We know the big guys from Georgia have to do the job in the middle, and uh, hopefully we got a bounce back year from uh, Josh Wett this season. But the fact that they're using Quinion Mitchell in the slot yeah. tells me this secondary is going to be much improved this year. Last year they just got eaten up certainly in the, the collapse of the last couple of games, but even earlier in the season, their their coverage was just not good enough uh, on the outside and in the slot. If Quenya Mitchell is that good that they put him in there just to test him out, and he now looks like the lead guy to be their slot receiver, that means Vic Fangio knows he can do the job and he'll be good at it. And if they've got a combination of Rodgers and Ringo outside across from Slay, that they've been good enough that they've been able to experiment with Quenyon in the slot, 
that tells you they really like what they're seeing out of their defensive secondary, and that could be a major area of improvement for this Eagles defense last year, from last year that just wasn't good enough. Are you surprised at all that Hassan Reddick has already requested a trade from the Jets? Nope, not at all. Um, <laughs> what I'm surprised at is that Joe Douglas didn't understand the way things work in the National Football League. If you yeah. trade for a guy and they got him for a reasonable amount, not a overpay, not a steal, about going rate right for what it was going to be. I thought all along when they had the, if he plays X amount of snaps, it'll move up to a higher pick. Yeah, that's not happening. You, you knew that was already happening. So he was going to get a third for him. If you're going to give up a third, you have to know that you can get close to the number that is uh, the player is looking for from his agent. Yeah. And I'm sure there was at least one conversation where Hassan's before the trade went down, this is the kind of numbers we're going to be asking for. And I got to believe the Jets said, oh, okay. Maybe they didn't say, we'll get the deal done. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. But they said, all right, we can negotiate off that. And they came in, they made him an offer, and it wasn't anywhere near the ballpark that Hassan was looking for. And he decided, yeah, I said I'd show up for camp. I'm not showing up. You're, you're, you're disrespecting me with the offer you put out there. That's on the Jets. You, you can't make that deal unless you are X amount of percent confident you can get a deal done. And I'm sure the two parties are not even close right now. So Howie Roseman made a very smart move. I was not happy when they traded to Son Reddick. I'm a big Hassan fan. And yep. I'm not sure that Huff, the guy that they brought in from the Jets, is going to be able to do Hassan Reddick things on Eagle dif- defense this year. But if you get a third-round pick for a guy that uh, isn't going to even be showing up at camp, the Eagles made the right move. They they weren't going to get close to what Hassan wanted. The Jets aren't close to what Hassan wanted. I don't know what Hassan's ask numbers are, but he's sticking to them. And shame on the Jets that they didn't know what they were going to be and they could be looking at this potential problem. Yeah, this is what I find bizarre. The Jets almost ask, act as if, it, yeah, 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 we're the Jets. You'll get your money. Yeah, don't worry about it. And then when it came time to negotiate, they went, well, we can't do that. I mean, how do you not know that ahead of time? You can't just give it lip service at the beginning. you got to take it seriously and do your homework. Major faux pas on the part of uh, Joe Douglas, the Jets general manager, because you do watch Huff go out the door, and again, I've got opinions on both of these players. I think Hassan Reddick's a better player. I know he's, no doubt. he's older, no but doubt. I absolutely believe he's a better player. And no the doubt. Eagles paid Huff good money to bring him in. So you know Huff's going out your door. You're going to replace him. It's going to be Hassan Reddick. It can actually be an upgrade for us. But you got to know what the cost is. And you know what the cost is that you had to give the Eagles, but the cost to Hassan Reddick apparently they're surprised by and are not willing to get up into that neighborhood to get a job, uh, a deal done. That's that's all on the Jets. They they should not be facing this issue that they have right now. They should never should have traded for him in the first place if they knew his ask number was going to be what it is. It's not a hypothetical that the NFL management wants 18 games. That's not a hypothetical. But in a hypothetical, if you're the Players Association, Jody, what do you think they should ask for in return for an 18th game? Because bodies get battered. It's a uh, that, that's a great question because I don't know the answer. Anytime someone asks me a great question, I don't know the answer to I immediately say it's great. Um, <laughs> it, it, less practice again? Because every time they go into an, uh, a negotiation between the players and the owners, the owners are always willing to give something, but it's not money. They don't want to ever upgrade, uh, upgrade the percentage of the overall take that the players can then get a part of, and the players have settled for in the last several collective bargaining agreements, less practice, less padded practice, less time that you have to be at the facility. They always keep compromising the amount of time that the players spend with the teams, which we get the quality of product that we have. I think it's less than it used to be, but you can't tell that by attendance and or television ratings. All it does is go up and up and up and up and up, so the owners never plan to say, yeah, we'll just let you guys do a little less work. I don't know what is the ancillary benefit they can offer to the players anymore. Maybe if the the, the amount is big enough, they can give them a small percentage, a small chunk, and 
give them more money, but the owners have held the ground on that for the last several collective bargaining agreements they've done with the players when it's meant added revenues. I, I honestly don't know. I think you got me on that one. I, w- I, would, I think I know where I would start. I would start with something simple as give me, I want a second bye week. And then I would want rules around that second bye week as to how much you're able to be each other and meet. I mean, I would start with that second bye week to give at least somebody a chance to heal up. I mean, it's simple, but it's like, but I'm a simple guy, Joey. It's a simple, but it's a smart answer, as a matter of fact. And it's something that the owners shouldn't blanch at because it just extends the season. And the longer the season, the better the season for, yes, the players get some downtime, but they're committing for that much longer a season. Another bye week and another game, so you're adding two more weeks to the overall season. If that's enough for the players, I think the owners would offer that tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now let's get to the Phillies, speaking of long seasons. And it's yeah. it's been a long season. They're still sitting there at... 20 games over 500. They're still sitting there right now with the second best record in the National League, a couple percentage points behind the Dodgers. What's what is your opinion of the state of the Phillies today? They're okay, which yeah. is not great and not bad. And there is some panic going on, which I'm not sure is justified or warranted. But they're okay. They are where the, where they are. They've got a comfortable lead in the division, which means they're going to win the division. And they're going to be in the postseason. They need to finish ahead of either the Brewers or the Dodgers and make sure they don't have to play in that wild card round, which makes it a little bit trickier. But they're okay. What they need is Ranger Suarez has got to come back, and he's got to be Ranger Suarez. And I'm not talking about Mm -hmm. the Ranger Suarez, who was a legit Cy Young candidate for the first two months of the season. He was overachieving, and people might have gotten a little caught up on it. But he's a solid starter in Major League Baseball, And he hasn't been for a while now, and when he comes back, you have to hope that he's better than he was before he got hurt, even if it's not Cy Young-level Ranger. If you're going with uh, Wheeler, he's your ace, surely, and Nola's going to do what he's going to do, which is more good than bad. Uh, Christopher Sanchez, we'll read him over the next four months and find out is he locked to get a start in a postseason series or not. But first things first, got to find out what Ranger is. And we don't know exactly when Rangers coming back, and his four starts end of August into September will tell us a lot as to whether the Phillies have a World Series running. Right, and exactly. I'd also like to point out that they're in the position they are today because all the games in April and May counted, uh, and the people mm-hmm. that sometimes it gets forgotten in the moment. <laughs> Those games did count. That's why they are are where they are offensively. What do you think of them at this point? Uh the outfield isn't good enough and that's yeah. not good um, Marsh has been pretty brutal over the last three or four weeks now he's striking out an extended rate that we've never seen him do before they're going to need Hayes to come back and Hayes is one of the most intriguing players on this team I yeah. really love the fact that the guy swings the bat hard every time he gets in there and he, if he's going to hit it he's going to hit it hard but he also isn't the best judge of talent as to what's in the strike zone and what's not. He's had mm-hmm. some god-awful, ugly-looking swings. But when he makes contact and he swings as hard as he does, he's got a chance to get big hits. And right now they don't have him, but they said the hamstring is going to be marginal, kind of like uh, Marsh when he got hurt. Uh, Swarber is only going to be 10 days and then boom right back in. Mm-hmm. They need him back in uh, because if Marsh is struggling the way he is, they need Hayes back. I'm not sure that uh, Weston Wilson and or the guy that they just called up the other day from Allentown who's having a really nice uh, AAA season. Uh, I'm not uh, excited about having them in a postseason lineup. So they need Hayes back, and Hayes has got to be able to uh, be his best Hayes if this team's going to have an average outfield, and they're going to have to go above and above, uh, above and beyond average when they get to the postseason. Uh, obviously, you grew up in a time where a guy got a ball and he'd go seven, eight innings, especially if he's the ace of the staff. We've talked about this part before. But as I mentioned at the beginning, the Red Sox got caught up in something where they had a bullpen day. It was Saturday. And then James Paxton, their starter, went out and got hurt on the third batter of the game on Sunday. 
Well, it's the day after a bullpen game, so there's nobody left in the bullpen. Yeah. What what has always been your thought on when you see bullpen days in modern baseball, considering what you grew up with? Yeah, I've never liked it, but I know it's it's what baseball is in 2022, 23, 24. It's certainly been this way for a good couple of years now. And if you're going to do it and you know you're going to do it before the season starts, you better start with an 11- to 12-man deep pitching staff. Yep. And I think the Phillies were in pretty good position to start the season – and I'm still good with where they are now. I'm, I'm not panicking about the bullpen. I know Hoffman gave up the walk-off home run in Arizona one pitch. See you later, bye, they lose. I know Matt Strom got pummeled on one game in the road trip, and these are two all-star relievers the Phillies had. I still got faith in their bullpen. Uh, the new acquisition that they got from California hasn't given up an earned run yet. Is the RA is zero zero zero? That's always a good thing. It's given a cup, given up a couple long flies, but hey, you keep them in the park, you keep them in the park. Uh, I I think the Phillies bullpen will be solid come uh, postseason time. And once you get to postseason, you do try and lean on your starter to go a little bit longer than you do during the regular season, and you get a couple extra days off. So I don't think bullpen will be an issue for the Phillies to the rest of August into September and October. I think they're good in the pen. My friend, it is always a pleasure. Outstanding as always. Uh, appreciate any time I get a chance to talk with you. Have a good Penn State season. If you get me back up during the Penn season, I'll, I'll talk whatever Penn State you want. I think it should be a, a fun, expanded Big Ten season. You have a great season. I will. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jody. My pleasure. The great Jody Mack, Jody McDonald. Um, and uh, always great to talk with him about everything, with the Phillies, with the Eagles, whomever. Uh, oh, by the way, I was just glad Joel Embiid finally won something. Uh, it's, it's great. He's got a gold medal. He's a gold medalist. He played well. I thought he did a good job. The heck. All right. This half hour brought to you by Sunbury Motors. 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, and online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Kia, Hyundai, best in new inventory. I went with Ford. Incredible buying experience. Set up the financing exactly the way I needed it. And they have an entire lot filled with pre-owned inventory. They go over each one of them with a fine-tooth comb. And by the way, Hyundai is really selling right now. And a terrific service department, routine, difficult. They back it all up at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. As we continue on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection. Imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet Reagan Street Sunbury wants to see you and thank you for your years of patronage. You want your young athlete to get the most out of life and NIL. You need a roadmap, a strategic approach. NIL Game Changers help student athletes earn while they learn in their collegiate journey. Driven by former student athletes and coaches who work as NIL sports agents and content media designers, they'll guide both student and family, starting with high school students looking toward college and those already in college. Get a seasoned team of marketing experts with a background in athletics and coaching. Visit NILGameChangers.org, the ultimate destination for name, image, and likeness opportunities. Opportunities. 